In 2023, I traveled to the Indonesian island of Sumatra in search of its incredible biodiversity. While venturing into Sumatra's last remaining forests, I encountered an array of beautiful and bizarre species. Some are the most unique and mighty of their kind, while others are found nowhere else on Earth. And some are among the most endangered species that exist today. This is Sumatra. My first base would be the Sumatra Eco Project Lodge in the lively village of Bukit Lawang. From here, I would have easy access to the Losa National Park, where many of the species I was searching for reside. The rainforest here is inhabited by an array of amazing primates, including long-tailed macaques, Thomas's leaf monkey, the white-handed gibbon, and of course, the Sumatran orangutan. But there was one in particular that I was especially intrigued by. And unlike other primates in Sumatra, this one is active after dark. My only chance of seeing this unique animal would be to hike the forest at night. I was actually looking for snakes during these night hikes, but I would often scan the canopy with my head torch in hope of seeing nocturnal mammals. I crossed this jungle stream which was alive with invertebrates, including freshwater crabs. Erusius dimodiotypes, one of the most beautiful grasshoppers I've ever seen. Amazing stick insects. many dazzling moths and their larvae. And a colony of Dinomermex gigas, one of the largest ant species in the world. I also found this keeled slug-eating snake, which I thought would be the most exciting find of the evening. That was until I spotted intensely glowing eyes slowly moving through the canopy. My eyes widened and my heart skipped a beat, as it could only be the animal I was hoping to see. So I've just been on a hike to look for the Calliophus perficatus, but instead we bumped into the only venomous primate, the slow loris. In fact, there are currently nine recognised species of slow loris occurring throughout South and Southeast Asia. But that may change in future, as their taxonomy is under revision. We're just giving you a couple of minutes of darkness to see if it reappears. But it's been showing brilliantly. And we can see every single detail of this animal. And I never imagined in my entire life I would get this close to one. After sitting in the dark for five minutes, in hope that the loris would reveal itself even more, we turned the lights on again and had a wonderful surprise. I was careful not to shine my torch directly at the loris, 
as they have very sensitive eyes designed for seeing in the dark. The Sumatran slow loris and the Sunda slow loris are both thought to occur in Sumatra. Both species look similar and telling them apart in the field is difficult. However, it is thought that slow lorises north of Lake Toba in North Sumatra, specifically within the Losa ecosystem, are likely to be Sumatran slow lorises. Based on this information, I would be inclined to say that I had seen the Sumatran slow loris, but I am not certain. After spending around 15 minutes with this loris, it eventually decided to move on and slowly vanished into the forest. It was time to go deeper into the Losa ecosystem and head northwest, passing the onomous Mount Cinnabung, an active volcano which last erupted just three years ago decimating the nearby village. I met with my guide in the village of Kitambe and we hiked for one hour into this enchanting jungle to reach our camp. After settling in and having a camp cooked dinner, I set out on a night hike as usual in search of the forest's inhabitants. Again, magnificent invertebrates covered every leaf and branch in the forest, including this massive mango hawk moth, the largest sphingid moth I've ever seen, and the tropical swallowtail moth which is highly abundant in this forest and other arthropods such as this Anoplodesmus millipede and a surprising sighting of a roosting scarlet trogon one of the most beautiful birds in this area later into the night I was thrilled to come across the Sumatran palm viper a venomous snake that's only found in Sumatra. And then, as if this evening could not get any better, on the way back to camp, I spotted familiar glowing eyes in the understory. It was not one, but two slow lorises. An incredible sight. I previously mentioned that lorises are venomous, a unique trait among primates. Close to the elbow on each forearm, a specialised gland produces a substance when the loris is threatened. This substance is then combined with saliva, which creates a toxin and a venomous bite. 
the bite of a loris is rather potent, as wildlife biologist George Madani found out the hard way in 2012. He suffered severe anaphylaxis, but thankfully recovered. Bites are very rare, and often occur when people are working closely with these animals. Sadly, the cute appearance of the slow loris is its biggest downfall, apart from habitat loss. Thousands are taken from the wild each year for the illegal pet trade. This has led to viral videos online of lorises adopting a stance with their arms raised above their head, while being harassed by the illegal owner. To a novice, this would seem like a comical video, but it is in fact a scared animal, ready to access those specialised glands on its arms to deliver a venomous bite. That's if its teeth have not been brutally removed. The future of Sumatra's slow lorises is uncertain, and it was a privilege to see them in the wild, in the island's last remaining forests. I admire organisations such as the Sumatra Eco Project, and all the hard work they do to prevent slow lorises from becoming extinct.